Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. This we end our discussion on the uh, muscular uh, movements. So now we will talk about the skeletal system because the skeletal system works closely with the muscular system. So now you understand why we were talking about the skeletal muscles specifically because the skeletal muscles uh, work in coordination with the bones of the skeletal system. So in order to understand the overall process, we need to understand the skeletal system as well. So what is skeletal system? So it forms the basic framework of the body. So it is like the rough sketch. So first you have this basic framework and on top of this you have uh, the flesh and the blood and all those things flowing here and there and that is how you make up what we all are. Right. So this is the basic framework. So without this, our body would not be able to support itself because the skeletal system is made up of bones mostly and the bones are strong enough to support the body. So they are composed of bones, cartilages and joints. So these are the things. Now they are mostly composed of bones. If you consider an adult human being, the, an adult human being's body is made up of 206 bones. So an adult human being. Now you will be surprised to know that in a baby who is born, how many bones are there? You might guess it to be lesser than 206 but actually there are almost 300 bones which are present in a baby now how the number decreases as the baby grows what happens is that the smaller bones start to fuse together to form bigger bones and that is how the number decreases from 300 to 206 so these many bones together form the entire skeleton of the body so now what is the importance of the skeletal system? Why do we have a skeletal system? Why do we need this basic framework? Firstly for protection because as I said, secondly due to because of support and thirdly because of movement. So these are the three important reasons why skeletal system is important as I said. Skeletal system is quite hard and rigid, so it can actually act as a protection. So it can protect the internal organs and softer tissues. So if you see, just, just I'll just give you an example. Let us suppose if you consider this rib cage which you have in your thoracic region, this rib cage, right? Now inside this, you have so many delicate organs like heart the outer, the blood vessels, so many things are there inside, right? So, and they are all delicate. They are all made up of soft tissues. So, in order to protect them, you need some tight or tough outer covering. So, that means the skeletal system can actually put the softer organs inside and it can actually protect it. It can provide support because it gives a strong base to prevent the body from collapsing. Because when we you look at your body, what do you see? You can feel the skin, you can feel the flesh which is present inside the skin, under the skin, right? And they are all soft. So, for example, when you get a cut, let us suppose by mistake you get a cut on your body. What happens? It starts to bleed because it affects your skin. The skin is very soft and very like um, it, it is... It gets damaged easily but since you have strong bones inside I mean you your bones fracture only when you meet some severe accident otherwise they are strong enough to you know, support your body and it, to prevent your body from collapsing every now and then it helps in movement because it provide attachment point for muscles now we saw in the previous section that the muscles how muscles contract now muscles contracting alone doesn't help in the movement because the bones need to be moved because if you look at your hand it is made up of bones right here you can see one long bone again in the forearm you can see two long bones so these bones need to be moved and how will you move these bones so the skeletal system actually provide attachment points where the muscles get connected to the bones so when the muscles contract they can make the bones move again the two bones get connected at points called joints so the joints again help to coordinate the movement of the two adjacent bones so that is how the entire movement take place so skeletal system these three very important functions and that is why it is very very significant 
So now let us talk about the most important component of the skeletal system that is bone. So let us see what is bone. So bone is a strong and non-flexible tissue. So the bone in itself is not at all flexible. It is very strong and rigid. So it forms the framework of the body. So when you look at the entire skeleton, it is all made up of bones. So here you can see many such bones join together to form different parts. For example, many such small, small bones join together to form the feet. Again, long bones form to be joined together to form the entire leg. And that is how the entire skeleton is built up with the help of bones. And finally, this forms the basic framework of the human body. Now, if you talk about the structure of bone, it is it has an extracellular matrix which is an extremely dense matrix and due to this dense matrix bones are not at all flexible. It is made up of calcium and phosphorus and that is why it is said that the intake of calcium and phosphorus should be proper if you want to have healthy bones. And so that is the matrix and what are the cells which are present in the matrix? The bone cells are known as osteocytes. And there are also tiny little holes in the matrix which are called cannuliculi, and these holes help in communication between the osteocytes. So something like this. So this is the transverse section of a bone where you can see these red colored structures which you see they are the osteocytes and there are small cannels in between. So these tunnel like structures are nothing but the tiny holes in the matrix. So they are the cannuliculi. So which helps the osteocytes to communicate with each other. So this is how the structure of the bone is. Let us talk about the next component of skeletal system that is cartilage. So what is a cartilage? It is a semi-transparent, elastic and flexible connective tissue. So bone was not at all flexible but cartilage is more flexible when compared to bone. So mature cartilage is relatively solid. So in young cartilage is more flexible but mature cartilage is solid. Where do we find cartilage? It is present in nose, ear, trachea, covering of bones, in movable joints. For example, you can feel the presence of cartilage at your nose tip. So if you touch your nose tip and you try to move it this side and that side, you see that you are able to move it. That is because it has some flexibility due to the presence of the cartilage. Similarly, in your ears, you have the movable portion of your ear, right? the outer ear. So that is because of the presence of cartilage. So it helps to maintain the shape and flexibility of the organ and also supports the structure. So even though it is also uh, like bone, but it is not that rigid. So it provides some flexibility for movement. And most importantly, it is also present as covering of bones in some joints. For example, here if you see, this is a bone, this is also a bone. So they are strong. But the covering of the bone has cartilage because it is a soft, uh, comparatively softer tissue. So it helps to provide a uh, padded protection to the bones. So these are the areas where cartilage is present. The structure of cartilage, again, this also has a matrix and the matrix here is solid. It is made up of proteins and sugars. And which are the cells embedded in the matrix? The cartilage cells are called chondrocytes. So here you can see this, the entire space is the matrix and these cells which you see here, they are the chondrocytes. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.